Lately, we have all started to be able to return to training. Wherever you are in the country, you have varying rules and regulations. And where we are here in Oregon, we're in what we're calling phase one. And that means that we can start to hold private lessons, but we need to wear a protective mask underneath our fencing mask. And this is a thing that people have been struggling with. There are lots and lots of options as to what kind of mask that we can use. And over the last week or so of experimenting and having our students come through private lessons, we have discovered a few things that we would like to share with all of you. There are many types of masks available. Some made specifically for fencing. Others have been made for cycling and skiing. Commercially available masks, homemade masks, masks that people give you as a little treat when you buy a pair of shoes, paper surgical masks, there are also paint spraying masks and other things that people have been using. All of these will fulfill the requirements that are placed upon us by our county and our state. Wherever you are, it may vary, but this is what is allowed where we are right now. We and our fencers have discovered that there are several issues that we run into when wearing these masks underneath our fencing mask. First and foremost is the problem of putting on our fencing mask over the mask. If I'm wearing a mask and I try to put my fencing mask on in the traditional manner from top down, I knock this mask off. So I need to do what all glasses wearers that fence are already doing. I need to adjust the back of my mask so that I can put it on chin first so I don't pull my mask off. In this case, I'm using a Leon Paul mask and moving this disc by loosening the straps is pretty easy. If I'm wearing a traditional mask with a tongue, I'll just have to bend that tongue up put the mask on and then bend it back down again. This won't hurt the mask. Other issues people have discovered are breathing and heat. Obviously a mask is going to reduce the amount of air that you can take in and out. In a full on fencing match, this would be an issue, but in our current situation and for the foreseeable future, we are in training mode and the workouts we are going to do with our fencing mask on will be limited to how hard we work physically. Coaches will be paying particular attention to this, but fencers also need to listen to their own bodies and take a break, stop when they have to. Other common issues when wearing the mask is the heat. Some masks are expressly made to help you reduce heat. They work well for some people and not for others. You're going to have to experiment and find what works best for you. But again, you will need to listen to your body. Slow down when you get too hot, stop, take a break, move away from people so you can take your mask off, drink some water, and get your heart rate back to where you need it. Younger fencers especially should feel free at any time during a lesson to ask to have the lesson stopped so that they may cool down and catch their breath. Regardless of whether it's a homemade mask, a commercially available mask, or a surgical paper mask, some fencers sweat a great deal when they exercise. Everybody is individual in this regard. Plus, our breath has moisture in it. So as we are at a higher respiration rate and a higher perspiration rate, some fencers may find that as early as 10 or even 15 minutes into a workout, their mask is too saturated to breathe through. If through experimentation they cannot find a mask that solves this problem, then they must stop, remove themselves from the area where a mask is required, and change to a clean, dry mask. This is not unusual in fencing. You have often seen a fencer who will change his jacket between pools and DEs because they've saturated the jacket and they want to wear a cooler, drier, lighter garment as they move on in the tournament. This is essentially exactly what will happen if your mask gets likewise saturated and heavy. Lastly, those of us that wear glasses 
even without wearing a fencing mask, have noticed that when we wear one of these masks, whether it's in public or private, our glasses fog up. The air is escaping around the top of the mask, causing our glasses to steam up. You can search on the internet for solutions to this and you will find almost as many solutions as there are recipes for chicken soup. It's endless. Smear this on your lens. Put that on your lens. The one thing they all have in common is that if you do whatever they're asking, you're going to wind up with a very clean pair of glasses. The cleaner the glasses are, the less dirt or oil that are on them, the less likely they are to fog. You also may find that a mask with a wire inside that can be formed to the nose may help and depending on your glasses and shape of face, you will find that this might be enough to solve your problem. For those of us with issues even in that situation, there is one thing that I have discovered that you could do if you do it carefully. When you put your mask on, you will need to take a piece of athletic tape and place it over the seam at the top of the mask. I've tried several different types of tape. The athletic tape seems to be the one that works the best. You can experiment yourself, but I'll give you one warning. One of the reasons the athletic tape works for me is because it adheres very well to the skin on my nose. It also means that I have to be careful and deliberate when I'm taking that tape off. So if I'm going to do that, it basically looks like this. I put on my mask. This one has a wire. I'm going to push it down so that it's where I need it to be. Make sure that my mask is well fitted. I have a piece of tape that's already been cut to the right length and I'm going to place it, pressing it onto my skin first and then smoothing it down over the mask. If I've done all that well, then when I put my glasses on, I can breathe and I will not fog the lenses of my glasses. When it's time to take it off, I close my eyes and carefully peel the tape away. At the end of a 30 minute lesson, I've got a nice little red stripe here, but it'll go away. So that's it. Those are the things that we've discovered about wearing a mask underneath your fencing mask. Remember to go on your mask chin first so you don't pull the mask off. Whatever type of mask you're wearing, make sure it fits snugly around the nose so that it doesn't fog your glasses. And if even that doesn't work, then you can add a piece of tape to help keep the mask located and direct the air away from the lenses of your glasses. We're excited that you're back on strip with us and we're excited that you're able to begin your training. Train safe, train well, and tune in next time for more tips.